Hello, thanks for tuning in this week. It's What Brothers with Abigail Jima. This week, we are going to be talking about joy. Let's see what our guest has to say about the topic. Joy is an unending flow of our confidence in the Lord. Um, it's, it sprouts up after we have established a very strong relationship with the Lord. And then the Holy Spirit has taken over our hearts. We can exhibit it. We, it is mostly seen in trying and challenging times of our lives. Once in a while, you hear somebody say, I'm happy. But as much as possible, we face challenges, challenges that make us sad. But then, the factor, the place of joy cannot be uh, overemphasized because that joy is, is a permanent position. No matter what you're going through, you might be sad, but then you still carry the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is established there. So in the bad times especially, your faith in the Lord is not shaken. There are people who have had to go through very trying times, so many trying times in their lives that have had reasons to turn their backs against the Lord because they think God has left them. But then when you have the joy of the Lord, no matter how intense or heavy the challenge is, your relationship with God is not shaken. Your joy, that joy is the confidence. Your confidence in the Lord is never shaken. So the bad times will come. Whatever winds of pain and struggle will come your way. But that joy you carry, it gives you so much confidence in the Lord. So after you have cried, after you have wailed, you still run back to the Lord. So there's a big difference between joy and happiness. Now, how can we maintain it? We maintain it by, by always communing with the Holy Spirit. Always communing. So there's a constant communication with the Holy Spirit. Yes, of course, you cannot be praying. You cannot be praying 24-7. There are times you have to sleep. There's a time you have to cook. There's a time you have to watch. There's a time you have to go to work. There's a time you have to interact with your colleagues at work. But then... The constant communication is, the, is based on the mind and the heart. When your mind is always in communication with the Holy Spirit, you might be cooking, you might be having a, a usual uh, conversation with anyone else, but then the place of the joy of the Lord in your heart and in your mind, it even manifests through how you speak, how you talk, and all. Because you are always communing, communing with the Lord. So, in as much as we cannot have time, yes, at dawn you can wake up and pray. You can have a, a scheduled time to commune with the Holy Spirit at all. Your mind and your heart is tuned with the Holy Spirit. So, you might be cooking, but you are praying in your heart. You are singing songs of praise and worship unto your Lord. So, I believe it is maintained by always communing with the Holy Spirit. Talk to him, occupying your mind with things that spark up the joy of the Lord. What spark up the joy of the Lord? The word of God. It makes you confident in him. Amen. Thank you so much for your views and input on the topic. God richly bless you. Let us know what you think about the topic in the comments below. Thank you for being with us throughout the season. It's been Abigail Jima with my team, George and Ephraim. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you next season. Stay tuned in to the channel for more videos. Bye! Hello people, welcome to True Talk. I'm George. Recently, it has been on my mind, this thing. What happens when you are the topic of discussion? Do you feel comfortable or do you feel awkward? Oftentimes, when you work in a group of people and you hear your name, you are either alarmed or concerned. Let me know in the comments how you feel when you hear your name being discussed somewhere. But today, I just want to draw your mind to something. In the book of Daniel, 
chapter 10, verses 11 and 19, there's something so unique that happens to Daniel. I know we know Daniel. Daniel is not in the New Testament. It's in the Old Testament. So I just want us to read it. Daniel chapter 10, the verses 11. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you, and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. In the verse 19, a similar thing is said. I just want to read it to you. It says, And he said, O man greatly beloved, fear not, peace be to you, be strong. Yes, be strong. In these two scriptures, we realize one common phrase running through. That is, O Daniel, one greatly beloved. It is so nice to hear such a word, to hear an angel address you in this manner. But how did Daniel attain this credential in heaven? Obviously, the the angel was from heaven, coming down and then addressing Daniel as a greatly beloved one. Before I go any further, I just want to say that you are also greatly beloved of God. When you read the book of Daniel, you realize the peculiar nature of Daniel right from chapter 1. Daniel is a man who made up his mind to follow his absolutes, to follow his God, to make sure that his life was as his God expected. He did not give any room for error. And I just want us to think about these things. We live in a world where we are faced with so many issues. Don't get me started on the things we hear at work, the things we hear in church, and even on the streets. It is so challenging. But I want to draw your mind towards these things. One thing about our lives, even in all spheres, is that we are faced with challenges. By now, you know Daniel's case and the challenges he faced, even in the lion's den. If you don't know this, I would recommend you buy a Bible. But going on, I just want to say that Daniel is someone who made sure his absolutes were his absolutes. We live in a world where absolutes have now become relative. It is my revelation, and so I live by it. It is how I think it is, and so that is how I'm going to live. But is that how we ought to live? Let me know your comments about this statement in the comment section below. But let us think closely about these things. Daniel lived an absolute life to the point where whenever he prayed, heaven was ready to attend to him. Sometimes you get people praying for hours and days and weeks and they complain and complain about their prayers and even the answers that are yet to come. I hope you are not one of those people. But we need to live our lives just like Daniel did. We must live our lives in a circumspect manner so that one day you will also be addressed as a greatly beloved one of God. I am sure once you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, in heaven, you are known as a precious one. The Bible says that heaven rejoices when one soul is one for God. I just want to leave this with you. How is life and how are you living it? Once again, it has been me, George, with True Talk. See you again. Bye. Hi everybody and welcome back to the blessing. Um talking about blessing. I hope you guys are wallowing in the blessing. We want to say a very big thank you to God for how far He's brought us. Yeah, we want to say a very big thank you to everybody for um tuning in, for subscribing. Man, our followers keep growing and thank you for that. So our artists for today are two lovely poets. We have Christian Tefwa and then we have Brakweku. Yes, these two are the giants when it comes to um, poetry and um, linguistics, when it comes to describing how God is and all of that. They are very good at it. So today we shine light on these two um, on, on the show. Starting off, we have Christian Tefwa. Trust me, if you guys have listened to her poetry, you guys will attest the fact that this lady is on point. Like, 
her poetry is and she sings too like she's a very good singer and both of them are very good singers as well and i think it adds this kind of vibe to the poetry and all of that if you've been to um some of their events you see that they come to minister and trust me events come down so yeah christian atifa um is a church of pentacles girl some of her poetry on youtube are do it in honor of the king um we also have grounded transformers you, should, you guys should check them check it out like and next we have bra kweku yes if you guys know bra kweku one of the awesome poets um in the gospel industry yeah he's also very great when it comes to poetry when it comes to music he also sings and the blend how he blends poetry and and music and the songs trust me it's it's amazing if you've been to most of the events you, you see that he's there almost all the time doing his thing. Brackwick is also a Church of Pentacles material. He worships with Hatchet District and he also he's been ministering with um Elder Mreku and um I think he's in his ministry, yeah. He's part of his ministry and they are doing amazing, amazing things in the kingdom of God. We want to say a very big thank you to Brackwiku and Christian Atifa um for their um, immense work that it puts in in the gospel industry when it comes to poetry. Um, I I think um, a lot of people should actually take this up. Um, the poetry and music combination. I think it's a very good thing. Yeah, and then they are doing just that. And we want to say a very big thank you to them. And we pray for God's blessings over their lives. All too soon, we've come to the end of another episode of the blessings, and um, also the end of the season of the of of the whole show. So you guys should stick and stay with us when we come back for season two of of the show. Um, we want to say a big thank you to all of you for subscribing to the channel, for liking, for commenting, for sharing your views, your thoughts, um, your criticisms. All of them are helping us um, achieve the best. Um, we thank you so much. Please don't forget to subscribe. Please don't forget to tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell another friend. Until next season, have a nice time. Hi everyone, I'm Abigail Betty Jima. Welcome to my channel. Please like, 